It's a high stakes game that players bet their futures on. The winning hand takes the pot, the house always wins. But this isn't a poker game. It's a real life Ponzi scam betting on fast cars for the promise of easy money and participants who played the wrong hand. Jandre sent a message out to a few of us notifying us that their bank accounts have been frozen. Ari van der Berg, who did not want to speak to us, was the mastermind behind a a Dealings, a luxury car scheme in Pretoria that we investigated in June this year. The rules were simple. Every six months, eager motorists could have their pick of the world's most sought-after vehicles in the scheme. Think Ferraris, Aston Martins and Lamborghinis. Cars that the scheme's members simply could never afford on their salaries. I'm looking at 30 to 50 of my very good friends all driving these stunning cars and everyone's saying the deals are working. How it worked. Each member bought an expensive car through the scheme. Their credit applications allegedly doctored on their behalf by people at the dealership. They signed for the vehicle and the car was placed in the luxury carpool. ANA dealings paid all the instalments and the drivers could live it up in the swanky cars, riding off into the sunset. They asked me what's my preferable car would I want to drive. I said, if you have a Mustang, I don't mind. I know I'll drive a Mustang. The deal was so sweet that some drivers bought multiple vehicles. But there was a catch. The cars were bought at massively inflated prices. So the banks paid a a dealings for the car. a a dealings paid the monthly installments on behalf of the participants to the financier and then pocketed the difference. For every vehicle the participants bought in their own name, a a dealings took possession of the car and placed it in the pool. But as all Ponzi's eventually do, the house of cards collapsed, leaving the participants to pay for vehicles they couldn't afford. People are not paying their bonds, trying to pay a little bit to the bank. Um, it's about 300 people that this is going to change people's lives in a negative way forever. While participants were left with nothing, those who ran the scheme walked away scot-free. The house always wins. But that was the old scam. After the carte blanche insert, we were approached by a number of victims that made allegations about a new scheme in the form of a ride to own. Investors were approached to finance the vehicles and those vehicles were then put into this ride to own scheme. She promised me that everything is fine and it's legal and it's legit and they've been doing it for three years. The new scheme was curiously similar to the a a dealings plot. Ari is not involved. This time, some of the vehicles in the pool would be rented out for profit, while other cars had a more sinister end destination. But we'll get to that later. First up, meet Tyrone and Shanae Fenter the attractive, friendly Pretoria couple behind the new venture called Ride to Own. They have a young family, lived in a leafy Pretoria estate and at face value were the very picture of success. But behind the veil, some say the pair were cooking up deceit. It seemed a sure bet. No upfront investment, easy money as soon as the contract was signed. So here's how Ride to Own worked. Similar to a a victims needed a clean credit record and financed cars at inflated prices. Their financial information was manipulated to get finance approved. Right to Own then rented out these cars to other people at a profit and used that money to repay the bank and give a kickback to the members for every car they'd signed for. All right to own cars were second hand and people who participated didn't just sign up for one or two cars. Some families ended up wagering up to 18 cars in the scheme. Glenda Paul is a private investigator. She was one of the first to discover right to own and its uncanny similarities to ANA dealings, but with a twist or two. 
the new victims explained to us or made allegations that Ari and um, Tyron may have actually shared offices. It was Shanae's role to recruit, charm and reassure members. When Chris, not his real name, joined Right to Own, his personal finances were rock bottom. But it didn't stop Shanae. Well, initially they told me that they've got this thing that you finance vehicles on your name for six months and then you get 15 to 25k per vehicle and um, after six months the, the vehicles are, are being settled by right to own and then after that you're free of it. In other words, Shanae offered Chris an attractive opportunity to make money and have wheels that his 15,000 rand a month salary would never have allowed had he asked a bank. All he needed to do was sign on the dotted line, while Shanae helped out with some sleight of hand. She told me that she's going to send contracts through to me, and I'm going to sign it and see what we can get and how many we can get. And I said, what do you mean about how many we can get? So she said to me, there's a way they do things, and there's a way they bypass certain aspects at the bank and that they bypass certain stuff. Simply put, it's alleged that Shanae's bypass trick saw Chris's personal information manipulated, so the banks approved him, and his family ended up with 14 cars. That's right, 14 cars, with repayments roughly adding up to 10 times his salary. Most members financed three or four cars in the scheme, which added up to very lucrative business for any dealership to get their hands on. But in this voice note, Shanae explains to another member how it works. Ons gaan koop self die karre, ons het nou ons is ons is geloof as 'n dealer by Porsche, ons gebruik hulle non-stop. Ons koop maklik 8 miljoen rand se karre in maand by hulle. Ons koop die kar cash en dan kry ons ons geld terug na wat die bank uitbetaal het by die dealers. So dis hoe dit werk. Tyrone and Shanae worked with numerous dealerships in Pretoria. Each sold the vehicles to participants in the scheme and profited well. This man, Gerald Faree, is employed as a salesman at Extreme Auto in Silverton in Pretoria. He was one of their star salesmen. Every victim we spoke to signed up for at least one car at this dealership and with Gerald, who had an ace up his sleeve a connection that brought him profit and favour. Tyrone and Gerald are related. A scam like this would be almost impossible to pull off without several links in the chain. What did the banks know? What did the people who arranged the finance know? And importantly, what did the salespeople from which these cars were bought know? We're here in Pretoria at one of them. We're going to pop by for a little visit. Hi, my name is Bongani Bingo. How are you? Good, and you? I'm from Carte Blanche. Okay. What do you know about Right to Own? Well, I've got a few finance details that we did for them, and then I heard it's a proposed scam, and that's about it. You had nothing to do with the no. owners of the company? No. They aren't your cousins? Yeah, they are. I'm related to them. How many cars did you sell that went through Right to Own? I don't know, I need to pull files. Here's the bottom line, Gerald. You were the legend buddy. sales of the year. I just want to ask something. You were the legend it wasn't a great escape, but Gerald tried. According to our records, at least three deals were facilitated at this dealership by one Gerald Faree. There's even a Facebook post where Faree is congratulated for being the legendary salesperson of the year by, you guessed it, Tyrone and Shanae Fenter. Then the story takes an unexpected turn. Earlier, we said that some of the vehicles in the pool were rented out for profit, while others had a more sinister destination. Turns out, Tyrone and Shanae had another business called AV Spares. It had a dubious connection with Right to Own. Sandy, also not her real name, is a former Right to Own member who saw our broadcast. But I know of some people who 
have four vehicles on their names and all four vehicles have been stripped for spares. Two weeks ago, police raided AV Spares, which was once the headquarters of Ride to Own, but they found nothing. The new owner of AV Spares says he's not involved in anything. Tyrone and Shanae always rush to finalise the car financing deals. Victims were firmly encouraged to sign up to four financing contracts in quick succession, sometimes two days apart. Could this point to a dangerous flaw in the financial services system? In car financing, an accredited finance and insurance or FNI staffer at a dealership assists clients with their credit applications to the banks. Andrew Marshall is the chief executive of vehicle finance house Marquee. They submit the correct vehicle information and they submit the information provided by the customer in terms of income and expenditure. In other words, they can manipulate anyone's information and, in an example like Chris's case, make it possible to look as if he can afford a small fleet of cars. So that single application that is captured by the f and is then forwarded to whichever banks they choose to send it to so that they get a multiple number of offers. And this is where Tyrone and Shanae got clever. They used these offers or loan approvals to finance more than one car at a time. Andrew confirmed that while he's never seen it done before, it's possible. We don't know where a customer is applying at different, different dealerships or, 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 for, or, for, or the same car at, you know, at different finance providers. It's a shocking weakness of a centralized electronic process that's meant to be bulletproof. And that is how millions allegedly disappeared. The House of Cards tumbled in April this year. And while some cars may be recovered, others have been chopped up. The victims are bankrupt and Tyrone and Shanae are living it up at the resort they bought in Mozambique. How much money did you get out of all of this? I got 75,000. I got 75,000, right? And now you owe millions. Yes. Shanae dismissed and threatened anyone who dared question the couple. So gaan bed, nee, dan vroeg jullie wie ze zijn met jou berachten pad houdt met jou kopbrals. En dan verstaan ik ook om je man gevlucht dat hij jou achtergelost zit. Pas op voor jou, Sinti. So I say, I can't hear it, it's basically good for me. I'm going to take care Can someone be this cold? To get some answers, we called Casa Lagoa, Tyrone and Shanae's Mozambican hideout. Hello? Hello? Am I speaking yes. to Shanae Fenter? Yes. Shanae, this is Bongani Bingo. I'm calling you from Carte Blanche. How are you? <laughs> good at you. I'm very well, thank you. Listen, may I speak to you? We've got a number of allegations surrounding you and yeah, your husband you and your company. You must make sure about your facts. Just listen to me. Make very, very, very sure about your facts before posting. Because you're going to get Okay, I'm telling you straight. I just want to ask you a few questions. Can you answer you those? I don't need to answer you, thank you. Charming lady. After playing their aces, Tyrone and Shanae are enjoying their spoils. Everyone else at the table folded. Thanks for watching. Have you heard about our new podcast? It's like Carte Blanche, but without the Sunday blues. Find Carte Blanche the podcast with new episodes uploaded weekdays on all major podcast platforms. Unique stories, unique perspectives, wherever you go.